here's my review of Gravity. Mikla, Mikla, haven't we done that already? Yeah, you're, you're right, Jedi John, I did. But that was Gravity the movie. This is Gravity the Force. Gravity's winding up on a whole lot of lists of the best films of 2013 when I reviewed it as Gravity Movie. Bobby Jones challenged me to add something about Gravity scientific theory. So here goes. Gravity, you should know, is younger than Hamlet. Shakespeare didn't know about gravity, not, not the scientific theory. He knew the word, he used it 15 times, but he used it to mean seriousness. Which is not to say Shakespeare didn't know about falling. Shakespeare is filled with falls. Tears fall. Trees fall. Stars fall. Angels, houses, and leaves fall. Julius Caesar falls. Curses and swords fall. People fall. People fall on swords. People fall in love. People fall out. Fall overboard. Fall sick. Falling, he knew. Everybody knew about falling. Gravity, the theory, nobody knew. Yet. Which does raise a question. Before gravity, how did people account for falling? Aristotle explained it by saying that things seek out their natural place, depending on what they're made of. He thought in terms of the four classic elements. Things made of earth had a natural place in the earth. Things made of water had their place on the earth. Things made of air had their natural place above water. Things made of fire rose even above the air. So something made of earth naturally falls to earth. Something else about falling that Aristotle was convinced of, he was sure that heavy objects fall faster than light ones. Just makes sense. And because it makes sense, and because Aristotle was convinced of it, so was everybody else. Until a man named Galileo Galilei, who, it happens, was born the very same year as Shakespeare. Now, Galileo used a radical new method for advancing knowledge. He didn't just think about things. He observed, he tested, he measured, he experimented. To test how fast things fall, he dropped them. He found that objects of different mass fall at the same speed. To measure how fast they fell, he rolled balls down inclined channels so they'd be going slow enough to measure. Pretty darn clever. He also determined that when things fall, they get faster over time. In other words, falling objects accelerate, and he developed a formula for that. What Galileo discovered about falling was a big step toward gravity. I like to think of it as the prequel. Well, it's one of the prequels. Galileo was also involved in another huge discovery that turned out to be another prequel to gravity. I think you know, people used to think everything we see in the sky all revolved around the Earth. It looks that way, doesn't it? Well, beginning 50 years before Galileo and Shakespeare were born, a series of astronomers and mathematicians showed otherwise. And Galileo, with his telescope, helped confirm the new model that put the Sun in the center and the Earth and all the other planets moving around it. Now, these sound like two separate topics. How things fall to Earth and how the planets move. Well, it turns out, 30 years after Shakespeare died, someone figured out those were actually the same topic. They could both be explained by the same force. This is a portrait of that somebody, Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, they didn't have 3D printers then, but they had portrait sculptors, and I guess too many elephants. This is done in ivory by a guy named David Le Marchand, who actually sat in a room with Isaac Newton and looked at him and carved what he saw in wax, kind of a 3D sketch, and then David went to his studio and did this in ivory. Uh, Newton might actually have looked something like this, but uh, bigger, not as pale. What Newton figured out about gravity is that it's not just about how things are attracted to the Earth, it's about how everything is attracted to everything else. And it's not just about how things fall, it's about how things don't fall, like the moon, the planets, the sun. Newton gave us the first thought experiment of an artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. And what he pointed out is that the moon actually is falling. It's just not getting closer to the Earth. If it weren't falling, the moon would shoot straight out into space. But it's falling along the curvature of the Earth, falling around the Earth. Or, as Woody might put it, orbiting is just falling with style. Newton worked out a mathematical description of gravitational forces and orbital motion. It took him 20 years. He had to invent a new branch of mathematics, the calculus, to express the relationships of mass, distance, attractive force, momentum, elliptical orbits. The poet Alexander Pope said this about Newton, Nature and nature's laws lay hid in night, God said, let Newton be, and all was light. Oh yes, Newton also helped us understand about light and the color spectrum. Newton never figured out what gravity actually is, but he did show us how to calculate motion under gravity, and his equations work well enough to actually run the space program even today. They work well enough to discover new planets. They work well enough to figure out that Saturn's rings must be composed of particles. But they didn't work well enough to explain everything. And so eventually gravity needed a sequel. That was written by Albert Einstein nearly a hundred years ago. And if this video ever gets a sequel, it will be about Einstein's theory of relativity. And if that video gets a sequel, it will be about the sequels to relativity, string theory, loop quantum gravity, topics I'm not at all qualified to begin to comprehend, much less talk about. So for now, let's just say this. Isn't it cool to know that, like Hollywood blockbusters, gravity sits right in the middle of a series of prequels and sequels? Stay tuned. Until next time, I'm Mikola.
DVD extras. This one is for psychologists and linguists rather than physicists. If everybody watching this video right now pointed straight up, we'd all be pointing in different directions, wouldn't we? I don't care how sophisticated you are about science and astronomy. I don't care how completely convinced you are that this is a round, round world. It's still hard to get your head around the fact that what we call up and down is really out and in. Long end screen today, lots to cover. Groovy Kool-Aid and Secret Void call this the Glinda effect, me in the bubble. You want to see the original Glinda? Click my face. If you missed my review of Gravity Movie, catch up here. And here, one of the coolest payoffs of gravity scientific theory, this photo of the Earth rising over the moon, shot by the crew of Apollo 8 45 years ago this week. See how they did it. If you want an introduction to quantum loop gravity, here's a lecture from Carlo Rovelli, the guy who introduced it. And finally, the man who inspired this video, Bobby Jones, has a review of another universe altogether, Google+. It's a long video, but Google+, will be with us for a long time, so you may as well dig in. <coughs> Click here to add me on Google+, <coughs> Click here to subscribe, and do whatever you have to do to follow me on Twitter. Goodbye now!